Hi, good morning and welcome to this weekend's edition of the program on this Jazz Festival weekend. Number, number 50-something is, they, the Jazz Festival hit 60 yet? I don't think so. I don't either. I think that the Folk Festival has. Yep, Folk Festival has. But not the, I don't know. But it can't be far behind. I'm just, I'm, it, it sure can't be. I'm just um, wondering, you know, Mr. Wayne, all those many moons ago, if he ever th- imagined how strong these festivals would be going in 2015. <laughs> Yikes. Anyway, that other voice that, that chimed in there was uh, none other than our good friend, the director of Newport's Edward King Senior Center, Carmela Gear. Carm, how are you? Good morning, Arthur. I'm good. How are you? Well, uh, as I've been saying for years, when people ask me that question, no use kicking if you're not swimming. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. So, uh, Remind s- me to remember that one. <laughs> somebody told me that. I heard that expression back when I was like seven, and it just stuck, it stuck, it with you forever. stuck in the old noggin for some unknown reason. But you have brought along a guest. We love it when you do that. I have a friend, and I brought her today. I brought Vicki White here from the East Bay Community Action Senior Corps. Okay. And she's uh, going to talk about some, uh, some exciting things that are coming up with that particular program, explain the program a little bit, mm-hmm. and talk about how we're going to be partnering together um, with regards to our senior volunteers. Good morning, Vicki. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for having uh, the East Bay Community Action Senior Corps on your show today. Oh, welcome to my job. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have you here. First of all, Vicki, let's just start with an overview of the program and what you folks are all about. Oh, sure. The uh, Senior Corps program, which is funded by the Corporation for National and Community Service, is a lot like the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. Not many people, Art and CARM, realize that there's an agency out there that regulates, facilitates, and encourages um, volunteer activities, civic engagement in every state in the nation. And part of our charge is to recruit volunteers who are over 55 to strengthen their communities through service. And we have certain focus categories that are outlined by our federal funders. How do you work together with, I imagine, not just the Edward King Center, but the other senior centers in the area? That's a great question. We have a very close relationship with the senior centers. We refer to them as our immediate community partners in as that their demographic, we have a shared demographic, I guess, is a better way to put it. And what they do is they're in the senior centers and they're running our meal sites. They're the volunteers who go out in the community and provide transportation for people who need to get to essential doctor's appointments, meals on wheels, and the list goes on with their community engagement. Now, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because there are a lot of folks out there that do look for volunteer ops some requires heavy lifting, so others don't. If, the, if a volunteer opportunity, like simply driving someone to a mm-hmm. doctor's appointment, sounds like it may be up their alley, mm-hmm. do, who do they contact? How do they contact They you? would actually contact our Office of Civic Engagement at East Bay Community Action. And I can give you the number if you'd like. It's 401-435-7876. And transportation is a critical issue, especially for seniors. We have a quarter of the senior population that are unable to drive but need to go to crucial appointments. And we view that art as part of being able to stay in their home through, you know, through volunteers who are willing to help them and not be reliant on a, on a facility adjustment. I actually did some Meals on Wheels volunteering mm-hmm. a thousand years ago now. But, boy, I tell you, it is... When you arrive at, at, at someone's home who is a recipient of this program, I mean, they are just so grateful, you know, to have somebody that can bring a meal right to their door because they wouldn't be able to get it otherwise. Well, not only that, but we also view the Meals on Wheels program as a touching point where when the volunteer enters the home of the person who's receiving the meal, they get to have eye contact, how are you doing? And then they're, they're actually trained to report any concerns that they may have. So through that endeavor with Meals on Wheels, we, we get to monitor people who might be at risk, who can't cook or do things for themselves, who may be failing. So in that, um, five days a week, you get an eye-to-eye visitation from somebody who's delivering a hot, nutritious meal. Plus, it is not a bad idea 
in you know certain situations, maybe some more than others, just to have someone be in contact with these older folks on a daily basis just to make sure everything's okay. You're spot on with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that really, and I know that's a that's a uh, uh, thing with uh, uh, mailmen, postal delivery guys and gals, where if they notice there's mail left in someone's mailbox from, you know, a couple of days earlier, you know, they give they give someone a heads up mm-hmm. to let them know. That sure. It becomes a telltale sign that something might be wrong. Exactly. Absolutely. Now, are you the same program that facilitates the lunch program through the Edward King Center and, and other senior centers in the area? That's correct. East Bay Community Action actually has meal sites all over our service area, which ranges from East Providence the East Bay area and Newport County. Boy, you cover a lot of ground. We, you know, we. I'm always proud to say, Art, that we cover over 430 square miles of service area. Wow. And, um, and being the field person for <laughs> um, the senior corps, I get to actually interface with the senior centers and um, and other community partners like CARM and the Red Cross and the Women's Resource Center here in Newport County, the Potter League, and um, the list goes on of the types of things that I'm really fortunate to be able to help propel with volunteerism. And I, I, I must say, and, and every time Carm and I promote the lunch program mm-hmm. during her monthly visits here to mm-hmm. the program, uh, I always rave about your smiling, bright and bubbly volunteers. <laughs> oh, thank they, you. Honestly, thank I'm you. serious. They, they are just, boy, you, you know, you walk in and they just, they can't do enough for you. That's true, and I'm really happy to say that our particular program, just by virtue of our service area, we're one of the biggest senior corps programs in the state, and we view it very globally. We're in contact weekly with all of the other senior corps programs throughout the state, and it's our mission really to do a, a little bit of a litmus test on volunteers. How happy are you in your volunteer position? Is there anything else you'd like to do? We actually um, are, do a survey annually to see if how to measure the efficacy, I guess, would be a better word, of our providing um, customer satisfaction for the volunteers who walk through our doors, who sign our registration form, and who track their hours through us, and then which in turn we then report to our funders, the Corporation for National and Community Service, because we want our statistics to rise. We don't want to be number 48th in the whole nation in terms of volunteerism, but it's our charge to go out and capture not just the existing volunteer, but volunteers who are already serving in their position who should let their service be counted by registering with the Senior Corps. Vicki, how did you get involved in in the position that you have? I I, I mean, did you do it? Did you pursue it because it was something you were really interested in getting involved with? I've been in national service for about eight years, and um, I ran an AmeriCorps team, which is part of the Corporation for National and Community Service, for five. Wow. National service has always been near and dear to my heart, but volunteerism in and of itself has always been part of my life, probably from the age of 13, where um, as someone living in Bristol, a younger person, I would volunteer at Cogshell Farm and do tours of the herb garden because it was a little bit of social enterprise. People would come in, they would pay for a little tour, we'd give them a tour, and the money would go immediately back into the, uh, the general operating fund for the farm, and I'm happy to say the farm is still thriving today through volunteers. And I'll tell you, vo- p- people that have never maybe been actively involved in volunteering, mm-hmm. you never know what a great sense of satisfaction you get from from being involved in uh, the volunteer projects of all, of all different well, types. And it's interesting you should say that, Art, that indeed the um, uh, blossoming population of uh, folks who are um, heading into the third chapter of their lives that are very eager to step up and volunteer in any way possible. That those numbers are beginning to explode. Um, you know, my new data piece this month is the fact that Newport County boasts the highest population of seniors over the age of 65 in the entire state of Rhode Island. You mentioned that last program, and I'm still trying spreading to spreading that one around. Mm-hmm. You know, far and wide that. Um, 
um, folks over th in their retirement years um, are not only choosing to stay and live in Newport County, um, but they're choosing to turn around and serve back to the communities that they have been living in for most of their lives. And in some cases, there are folks who, who choose to retire, you know, they've retired military um, and choose to come back to the uh, station that they knew and loved so much and to, uh, you know, live out the third chapter of their lives here. And we find them wanting to volunteer in any way possible. So in partnering with uh, EBCAP and um, with the Senior Corps program, um, we now have a place where we can put our, we have a database of over 300 volunteers at the King House. And now they have a place where they can rest um, and work at the same time mm -hmm. and have their hours counted and um, be recognized for their efforts as they move forward. So, you know, I, I am happy to announce that um, Vicki and the program um, will be uh, kicking off a, a whole new uh, major campaign of volunteerism with the Edward King House um, in this coming year. And um, it's an opportunity for folks to, I can't tell you how often they come to the <laughs> door and say, I'd like to volunteer. And then there's this moment of silence because they want to volunteer and they want to, you know, give back to the community, but they have no idea in what capacity they'd be able to do so. So the, uh, the program, the Senior Corps program, is already set up to uh, vet out what it is that that individual might want to do to give back to the community. And they may, in the end, have their hands in five different places, some of them one-hit wonders, um, and others that are continual service projects, like the Meal Site program mm -hmm. that go on throughout the year. And then there are other special events or, you know, um, uh, other not-for-profits who are looking for, you know, help within the community. And then, of course, the other thing that's near and dear to my heart, and that's emergency management. That's really where Vicki and I originally met before I took on um, this position. I can't remember which hurricane. It's probably Irene. Um, yeah, you know, some time the, uh, ago. The center. Yep, and they helped to uh, to man the uh, the shelter and um, and and really had a lot of volunteer support. Most of which were seniors. And you know, as much as we'd like to find another word to uh, replace the word senior, there is no other word to replace the word senior. These are folks who are all over the age of 55 um, that you know have a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of expertise and would like to put it to work. Uh, within the community and, and partnering with EBCAP and with Senior Corps and Vicki uh, um, and Deb O'Connell, we have a really great uh, opportunity to make the most out of those hours. We've often heard uh, Mayor Napolitano say time and time again, volunteers are what make the city tick. Absolutely. You know, without them, um, much of the work that needs to get done within the city just couldn't get done. I think if we were to equate those hours of volunteerism uh, to dollars, you'd probably be looking at hundreds of thousands, if not nearing millions of so, and I think Vicki probably has a data point to go along with that. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Um, actually, when we um, measured the hours of RSVP Senior Corps volunteers, we figured that we provide over $3 million a year of service. Well, there you go. To our service areas, meaning that the federal volunteer rate is $23.55. Granted, they have an internal gratuity. They don't actually get paid that, but if CARM or a community partner were, were to write a grant and they needed an in-kind value amount to show their viability to their grantor, they simply call up the senior corps and we can say, well, you guys provided um, $250,000 worth of service. They then incorporate that on line B of their grant, and that's a really strong match that really postures them in a much better position to be the receiver of grant funding through partnerships and, and through building um, stakeholdership and viability with these Bay Community Action Senior Corps. And as you know, I, you know, member, as said, well, Carm knows very well uh, because she heads one up. But uh, I mean, any type of organization like yours, mm -hmm. or whether it's a, you know, like a Knights of Columbus or a Lions Club or the Rotary or the Elks, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. membership and volunteers are the lifeblood of those organizations. Absolutely. We really couldn't get the job done without them when all is said and done. So try to imagine the meal site without our volunteers. 
try to imagine any of our events without our volunteers. Um, that's a nightmare for me to try to, to imagine trying to get all of that work done without that extra set of hands or that expertise that comes to the table in planning for anything that we do. Um, to have you know folks who are retired accountants or retired law enforcement officers or um, are heading for retirement and they're still active within their jobs, um, their knowledge base is invaluable. Sometimes you can't even put a dollar amount on it. You could put a dollar amount on the time, certainly, mm -hmm. um, but if we had to pay for um, all the services and, and all the uh, response that we had from our volunteers, you know, my little quarter of a million dollar budget would easily blossom to a five million dollar budget mm -hmm. um, without my batting an eyelash. Absolutely. Yeah, but it, it really is an eye opener when you do try to put a monetary amount on, you know, let's say you have like a dinner event, mm -hmm. you have six or eight people in the kitchen, you have a couple right. of people waiting tables. You have, you know, the cleanup afterwards. Somebody at the door to be your greeter. The mm -hmm. individual who helps yep. to uh, pass out um, paraphernalia. The, you know, the the folks who are helping in the parking lot. I mean, the list goes on and on. And that's just for a little dinner event. Yeah. You know, now it explode that event to manning a shelter during an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. And now not only do you have folks doing... 50,000 tasks, but you've got three shifts of them yep. doing that around the clock for what we plan for at least 72 hours. Yep. Um, you know, as we are knee-deep in the middle of hurricane season, those are things that Vicki and I think about on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And you can't do any of that stuff with um, without the lifeblood of our volunteers. So and, if, and, and even if you just attach the minimum wage to that and do the math it's on still up there. how many hours per pupil times, times, time, And boy, I tell you, you know, hit the equal button and it's a real eye opener. And that's, that's yeah. money that in a way is going back into rather than leaving. That's right. And now the, the mm -hmm. new thing that we're coming to see are folks are, are beginning to look at second careers or third careers in their lifetime. Um, many of our uh, newly retired or about to be retired folks um, may not be in the position to financially retire completely and are looking into a second or a third career and they're using the opportunity to volunteer within the community to learn a new skill. So, you know, there's it, really the, the sky is the limit. It helps to build up your resume, you know, n not just for our seniors, but, you know, also for our, our kids and our, uh, our young people out there that are trying to find their way in the world. And, you know, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. And we hear that all the time from mm -hmm. our, you know, our 65-year-olds. I don't know. I haven't grown up yet. So I'll let you know what it is I want to be when I get there. Um, so they try out new opportunities. Um, you know, what's it like to work for a not-for-profit as opposed to working within the corporate world? Um, so having an opportunity to volunteer for organizations like that gives them a chance to see what it's like on that side of the fence. And, Carm, you really hit the, uh, the nail on the head when you said it's all about exposing volunteers to new and different opportunities. Um, I had one volunteer who didn't know that he would be preparing tax returns at the age of 65 until I recruited him and said, you know, you can do this. You can prepare basic tax returns. We have a great um, partnership with the United Way and the Internal Revenue Service for the Volunteer Tax Assistance Program. And East Bay Community Action, thanks to the Senior Corps volunteers, all of who are over 55 and, and learned how to prepare tax returns and do quality review for um, income eligible patrons who um, come to us every year they were able to bring in over four million dollars into the pockets of the neighborhoods of our service area from Newport County to East Providence and that was pretty big because when you come in saying what can I do it's not what what will you do it's what can you do but here's what you can achieve and I know that, that East Bay Community Action offers so many other things in addition to what we're, we're zeroing in on here Absolutely. today with, with Vicki. Mm -hmm. And you're pretty much headquartered locally right over at, right across the way on Broadway. Yeah, we're just a stone's throw away. And we have um, family centers now where you can walk into East Bay Community Action, and it's a one-stop shop. You don't have to come back and make multiple appointments. You can go see heating. You can go see um, the SNAP department. You can go see behavioral health. We have a great new partnership with, um, with the East Bay Center, so we have some great new services that we'll be able to offer. 
and we also have a mothership, which I finally refer to, in East Providence that has the same services with the family center, and we also have a health center in Middletown and on John Chafee Boulevard and in East Providence at 100 Bullocks Point Ave. And we always talk about on these programs mm-hmm. how important it is and how well the local social service and nonprofit agencies mm-hmm. network together and work together and bounce off of one another. Mm. And I, this is a perfect example of, ex- of what we talk about when we, you know, that comes up on the program. That's a great, great point. We really do view um, the CAP agency culture as a very global one. We're in constant contact with West Bay Community Action. In fact, West Bay Community Action gave us uh, the Vet Corps program where we have a, a vet who will be at 19 Broadway, um, I believe, next week full-time. And what his charge is is to ferret out benefits for veterans and their families. And they're, they're the hard-to-reach benefits that you won't see in your average brochure. And what their charge is to also do is to connect them with the services for the East Bay Community Action, community resources, and other uh, veteran-related resources. And we do that in tandem, again, with West Bay. And they were very fortunate to get a grant that gives every CAP agency in the state a Vet Corps member who can help veterans and their families. So that's another way that we view um, what we do globally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we're almost out of time for this first segment. Um, but before we wrap it up, Vicki, I want to, again, let everybody know how they can get involved, what you're looking for, how people can volunteer, or anything you want to come up with that maybe I failed to mention. No, no, you actually did a great job. Um, if any of our listenership is interested, we ha- we're guided by performance measures in the following categories. We do disaster services, economic opportunity, that's where the VITA tax program comes in, and senior health insurance. We have a great partnership with child and family. They're also looking for senior health insurance program counselors. We um, have a mission in education, environmental stewardship. We do really great with that art, with Satuous Point, the Conservancy, and the list goes on of all of the people who really want to take a stand in preserving the environment through volunteerism. We also do Healthy Futures. That's where we have people work in our health centers. We have a great relationship with visiting nurses here on the island, and we also help veterans and their families. That's a, those are our priority measures. We also do other things like the Potter League here in Newport County. The Women's Resource Center just received a great <coughs> grant that's designed to bring neighborhoods together to reduce the risk of violence, to the occurrence of violence, I guess would be a better way to describe it. They're also looking for volunteers for events and just to help move that grant along. And um, you can call our office for more information on that. And you have a website, correct? We do. It's eastbayrsvp.org, but you're really better off finding us on Facebook to, to keep in touch with the day-to-day excitement of the Senior Corps, and that's just Facebook, East Bay Community Action Senior Corps. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very good. And uh, with, with that, we we're just about uh, out of time for the first segment here. We're going to let Vicki go. That's uh, Vicki White from East Bay Community Action Senior Volunteer Corps. Vicki, thanks again for being with us on this segment of the thanks, program. Vicky. Oh, thanks for the opportunity to serve, guys. Oh, my pleasure. And we'll, uh, by all means, we'll keep touch with you and have you back from time to time. Sounds good. Thank all you. All right. Thanks, Vicki. All right, Carm, you sit tight. We'll come back and we'll talk about some things happening in the month of aw, aw, ah, aw. August at the, the Edward King Senior Center, so uh, stick around. We'll be back in just a moment. All right, welcome back to this weekend's edition of the program, our monthly visit with Carmela Gear, the uh, director of Newport's Edward King Senior Center. Very nice segment there, uh, uh, just before the break there, Carm. Isn't Vicky Vic wonderful? Uh, gee, outstanding stuff, really. Really great program. Uh, we are so blessed to be able to partner with East Bay Community Action. Um, not only with the Senior Corps program, but with all of their programs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. W- you know, we alluded to the lunch program, as, which is one that really stands out That's to me. That's right. Absolutely. And it's really a staple at the house as well that it's uh, um, you don't have to be a member, you know, in order to participate. You really technically don't even have to be of a certain age group if you're over the age of 60 for our lunch program. Uh, and, again, it's the, you know, senior dining program. So even though we call it our lunch program at the Edward King House, right, yeah. it really is uh, through the partnership with EBCAP. Um, 
to three dollars suggested donation for a very healthy soup to nuts, literally, um, uh, lunch on a daily basis Monday through Friday but if you're under the age of 60 um, it's no longer a suggested donation it's a five dollar charge but you're still welcome to come and join us for that lunch program um, it really is bar none you know the uh, the cornerstone of, of the uh, services that we offer through the King House and we're very grateful for the wonderful people like Vicki um, who make those things happen and I, I don't mention this often enough when we talk about the lunch program um, but I should mention that this program is not exclusive to the Edward King Senior Center. That's right. So contact the senior center that's convenient to you. You got it. Like Middletown offers it, correct? The yep. Middletown Senior Middletown Center? Middletown does. Portsmouth does. And Portsmouth, yep. okay. Jamestown does. You know, the, um, the senior dining program is offered in uh, just about every senior center throughout the state. Um, you do not have to be a member of that program in order to attend for the senior dining program. Um, so, you know, take your take your pick. If there are folks you'd like to go see in Portsmouth, absolutely make your reservation in Portsmouth. And it is important that we do talk about the reservation piece because those meals are catered in. Um, and in, in our area of the state, they're catered in from the Cranston um, Senior Center where the headquarters for the Ocean State Dining Program are uh, located. Um, so we do need to have your reservation 24 hours in advance just to make sure we have enough food um, to be able to serve the, uh, the folks who, who come and join us. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to take your chances and see if there's an extra meal that we may have to offer in the event that someone made a reservation and you know, didn't come to the program that day, you're more than welcome to do that. We just can't guarantee that we'll have a meal for you on mm -hmm. that day. But indeed, well worth well worth the time, the energy, and of course the the social atmosphere is a lot of fun as well. Sure, but again, I, I just I did want to mention that because I hardly ever do, and it's important to point out that if you're listening, perhaps over in South County somewhere, absolutely, or even if you're you know on the island, it, you know, but it, but uh, the Middletown or the Portsmouth Center is more convenient for you, easier to get to. Please go, absolutely. Yeah, check with them and and uh, see if that's one of their offerings. Now, since we are into the uh, first weekend of the month of August, the first days of the month of August, yeah. the first dog days of the <laughs> take it a step further. But um, what's coming up this month? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. This is a, a new year for us at the Edward King House. I'm going into my third, in September, I will be going into my third year. I'll be completing my second year at the Edward King House. Third year? There are days when I feel like I've been there forever, and then there are other days when it feels like I just got there. Mm -hmm. um, today is one of those days when I feel like I just got there. Um, so uh, with that, this is our, our big announcement time of some of the new um, items that will be uh, coming up in with regards to events and, and programming at the Edward King House. Our theme this year is Connecting the Dots. Um, for older adults in Newport County and we really did discover in the past couple of years that the Edward King House is the, the hub, the place to go when you're over the age of 50 and you have a question about just about anything or you're looking for a volunteer opportunity as we discussed with Vicki. Um, or you're looking to see what retirement is going to be like and planning for that. Or you're in the midst of retirement and what do I do about Medicare and what do I do about um, enriching my life in, in the third chapter of my life. So in having that discussion and that, uh, that opportunity to see you know, what our real function is within the community, in the end, that's what we do. We connect the dots for folks. So although we may not have the immediate answer for you, we know who to put you in touch with to get the things that you need to ensure a, a healthy and active lifestyle as an older adult. So uh, one of the things that I'd like to announce today is that beginning in September, we'll be introducing our Senior Support Mall which sounds a whole lot bigger than it actually is. But one of the things that I discovered in the house is that I have this secondary office space. It's, uh, uh, it used to be that the program manager and the director were both located on the first floor by the dining hall at the King House. But when I got there, I moved the director's office to the mezzanine so that I can hear what's happening on both levels of the house in the event that I am needed. Um, but it also gives me a chance to um, have a secluded area of the house where I can get work done. 
So that left an office open downstairs, and we had piloted with a senior health insurance program, um, having a member of Child and Family Services and VNS available every Wednesday, and she still is, Dale Dupuis, uh, is available every Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., no appointment necessary. It's a walk-in service for anyone who has questions or needs help with their needs in senior health insurance. Well, it was so popular and it worked so well. I thought, We're, we've got something here. I've got this office space. We have one person who comes in once a week for three hours just on that particular piece alone. And so the idea has now grown to this idea of a senior support mall. And these are the folks that we're going to be partnering with on a regular basis beginning in September. So senior health insurance will maintain their, their anchor position on Wednesdays from 11 to 2. We'll have uh, the foster grandparent program, the senior core program, EBCAP services, child and family elder services, visiting nurse services, the American Red Cross, and AARP. They will all have time in that office with a, uh, a member or a volunteer of any one of those organizations who will be, uh, be, be available to connect folks to whatever services they m might need based on whatever their expertise happens to be. So instead of a senior trying to figure out how to get to the uh, EBCAP building, any one of the EBCAP buildings on their own, they can start at the Edward King House, feel more comfortable about where they're going and who they're going to talk to, and then head out to where they need to go for that next set of service. They want to sign up to be a volunteer. There'll be somebody available once a week that will be there for just that purpose, and so on and so forth. So we're really excited about this idea, and you know, where we're talking about volunteerism and unpaid hours and that sort of thing, um, the beauty of this particular program is that I have the space, and we have the demographic, and the partnering uh, organizations have the folks who have the expertise, and when you put the two together, um, you have a really great opportunity for people to get connected to service they may not have gone out to get connected to because they didn't feel comfortable going to an unknown place. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're really excited about that announcement, and we'll be having uh, posters made up, and um, I'll have more information about what those exact days and times are when I meet with you next month. And since you alluded to it, some of the folks you just mentioned that, are, that spend uh, you know, time in that at now that extra office, uh, we're actually you're going to be we're going to be featuring some of those folks on upcoming editions of this segment, or, right. the, or I should say these segments. Yep, as the year rolls along. So I, well, that, that's I, I really like incorporating the two and kind of rolling them into one and yep. two birds one stone. You All know? right, you've been so kind to open up that sec second segment for us that um, we really would like to fill it with the folks who have the expertise sure. and can share what their programs can do locally and what they can do globally. Mm -hmm. um, because it's really important information. I think most folks just aren't aware that all these services exist out there for them. Um, and it's everything from SNAP um, for nutrition to senior health insurance to um, consumer fraud alerts. You know, there's <laughs> all kinds of opportunities and um, to have that one-on-one -on -one opportunity with someone that has that expertise on a walk-in basis, mm -hmm. I think, is uh, priceless. A lot of times, I mean, it, only you and I can mention the names and mm -hmm. and the organization they're associated with, and in a maybe a sentence or two, give an overview of what they do, but not really delve into any details That's because right. it's not our <laughs> it's not our area of expertise, but it is theirs. So. That's right. That's going to be good stuff to share with our listeners. Yeah, yeah, right. really excited about that. And so next month when we get together, um, our guest will be Dale Dupuy from the uh, Senior Health Insurance Program. So she can talk a little bit more in depth on, you know, what that program is able to offer. And what's nice about having um, all of these folks partnering with us on site is that everybody has their own story. They have their own, um, their own niche. Um, so when you come to meet with any of these folks, it's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Um, you have a chance to, to share what your own story is, to find what it is that you need based on your story. Um, because certainly one size does not fit all when it comes to uh, needs as you're entering your, your retirement and senior years. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. 
All right, so there's that big announcement. I'd like to go back before we go forward. So we just completed senior week. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, King yeah. House. So much fun. Took I me three bet. days to uh, to rest from all the uh, activity and excitement for the uh, the seven days of senior week. Um, and I wanted to take an opportunity to thank our sponsors and the folks who made it all possible. The Preservation Society of Newport, Blenheim Newport, Aardvark Antiques, the Association of Rhode Island Authors, Federico Santi in the Drawing Room, Cindy Lee of Armory Antiques, our very own Florence Archambault and Raymond Sienko, and of course the Edward King House Board of Directors. We had a something, at least one something special, go on every day for seven days um, for Senior Week. The City Council had a wonderful proclamation in our honor. Um, we gave out our first Champion uh, for Seniors Awards during our annual meeting on the Tuesday night to the City of Newport and to the Newport Daily News. And of course we honored our Volunteer of the Year, Ann Gardella. Um, it was a really wonderful event. The whole week was just jam-packed with um, really fun, uh, new and not so new activities. And uh, we kind of brought that old holiday for seniors tradition back to life. And it, it was really exciting with a lot of folks um, getting involved and, and having a lot of fun. How did your picnic with the mayor go? Oh, it was awesome. I bet. Um, we had a really great time with it. This, the picnic itself was sponsored by Blenheim Newport, and we are so grateful to them. Um, we had a delicious uh, you know, hamburger and hot dog picnic and an ice cream social for dessert. And then the folks from Carnival Party brought a miniature golf set up to a Quidnick Park for our folks. And although the sun was beating down hot, we really had a wonderful time. Um, and you know, I, saw, I saw the mayor not too long ago. Uh -huh. One evening, you know who she was chauffeuring around? Who was she chauffeuring around? Former Mayor Richard Sardella. <laughs> Boy, does that guy have it made. You know, I have huh? to say, you know, we go to so many of these activities throughout the city, and how wonderful it is to have so many of our uh, our current mayor and then our former mayors who all get along so well, yeah. all attend all of these activities together. Um you know, Harry Winthrop and Richard Sardella and John Trifero and, you know, the, which is pretty good for me to be able to give you that list since, you know, by uh, carpetbagger dumb. I live in Middletown, so to, you know, to have that experience with all these wonderful city leaders um, who benefit from one another's expertise and, and the history that they all share together yeah. is really fantastic. And so, it really yeah. is good. I mean, you know, politics aside, uh, the, 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 a lot of these folks just get involved in so many different really things. Really great people, absolutely. That, yeah, they, they really, really do. Yeah. All right. What else you got? Okay. Now you got a, you have a trip coming up. I'm sure you're going to get to again. Or we do. In fact, uh, we have a trip coming up in September to uh, Washington D.C. There's still room on there. Well, we've blossomed into a second bus. Oh. So um, I now have 15 more spaces open. You do not need to be a member of the Edward King House in order to participate in this trip. Um, but please give us a call at 846-7426. It's a four-day trip, September 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st um, to Washington, D.C. It is an all-inclusive trip, bus transportation, um, but really it's the best deal in town at $349 per person, double occupancy, which is the reason we've expanded onto that second bus. So <laughs> there's still spots available. Give us a call. We're still taking in um, folks to join us for that trip. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, let's see. The Newport Circle of Scholars lineup is just about ready to be uh, released. We'll be uh, starting back in September with all of those wonderful classes. And we've got some new participants, I should say instructors, um, as well as some of our tried and true folks. Um, and I wanted to share some of those uh, opportunities along um, with your listenership. Um, our current uh, international events and review with Ron Becker and Ben Riggs is as strong as ever. Um, and if ever there was a time to have discussions about what's going on in the world, boy, is now a jam-packed time um, to be talking about uh, what's happening, especially with uh, what's happening in the Middle East still and continued. Um, there always seems to still be something new happening there. What's happening with Cuba? Um, really, there's a lot to talk about in this very lively uh, group. And what's great about this group is that they bring in uh, speakers from 
class to class who are experts in uh, many of these regions of the world. So that's an exciting program. Um, our very own Hank Niskern will uh, be coming back with his Art and Science of Good Decision Making. Um, really fantastic program, um, especially as folks are entering the third chapter of their life on you know, making those really crucial decisions of what to do next. That, that's one right up my alley, I'll mm -hmm. tell you. Absolutely. Um, Dr. Ron Barks will be coming back to uh, do a program on great peoples of Europe. He was the uh, gentleman who did that wonderful talk last season on uh, Los Alamos which was absolutely riveting. We really did enjoy that program a great deal, so we're happy to welcome him back. Um, Eileen Warburton is coming back, Dr. Bert Warburton, um, this time to do a classic literature um, program, two-part program that we're uh, really looking forward to. And she's calling that Classic Lit Redux. So we're uh, really looking forward to what Eileen has to offer. And, of course, our very own Jan Armour will be uh, coming back to do a program on learning from uh, Masters of Photography. And uh, he really puts together these fantastic uh, programs that are visual in nature. So there's a lot to be learned um, from that program. Dr. Andrew Brem, and when I say doctor this time, I mean MD, um, is coming to do a three-session program on negotiating through the healthcare system, how to manage your own health care. Um, this is a really great one, two, three, and ABC type program on, uh, on managing your own health care, especially in this day and age of um, health care programs shifting. Um, you know, what your rights are and what you need to know when you enter the doctor's office, especially when you're managing the cost of your own health care. Um, Joanna Becker coming back with her genealogy courses, which are very popular. Um, we'd like to welcome Jet Verts, who's going to be doing a program called The Bucket List, which helps folks to do exactly that, put together their bucket lists um, and how to be able to follow through on that bucket list. Um, so we're really looking forward to uh, to Jet joining us. And Joan johnson Freeze will be joining us with a program called Space the Final Frontier, question mark. Um, and it's a non-technical seminar that's going to look at why space is important to everyone's daily lives. So really looking forward to that. And uh, Barbara Alpert will be coming back with her program on art and women. So um, the course catalog will be released next week, and we'll start taking registration soon thereafter. But we're looking forward to a very exciting fall season with the Newport Circle of Scholars. And all this information can be found on www.edwardkinghouse.org dot org that's right not dot com dot org <laughs> absolutely don't go to dot com it's not a happy experience go to dot org oh okay absolutely um, and then some other exciting news, our own programming at the Edward King House is um, expanding. We literally had a space problem um, in the last uh, session on uh, so many folks wanting to sign up for our yoga classes and that kind of thing that we didn't have enough room. So we're expanding the sessions, and we'll be offering two sessions of chair yoga on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and two sessions of beginner's yoga on Tuesdays and Thursdays because there's such a need for it that they're all expanding. And we're also going to be adding uh, two new programs, and that's in uh, Yoga for a Healthy Back. And we'll be uh, also offering a Pilates program uh, beginning this fall. So um, that'll all be part of that same course catalog that will be coming out next week. So we're really excited about all of that. Yeah, well, that's a word that I had not seen all that often until recently, Pilates. Pilates. What is a Pilates? Uh, well, it's, I don't think it's a Pilates. I think Pilates is actually a, a form of, uh, of movement. Oh, it's not like a cannoli. It's not like a oh, cannoli. Wow, oh, but see, you had to mention the cannoli. That's, that's going to be stuck with me all day long, Art. We that, need to go shopping. That's where I lost it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. But it's just, it's another uh, health and fitness opportunity for our folks and, um, you know, there are folks that are already have been involved in Pilates for a good part of their lives, and, and we're very happy to be uh, offering it at the Edward King House. 
some of the uh, other uh, new things that you'll be seeing on the forefront. So we've always had, you know, readers' lecture series where, you know, authors have come in to talk about their books and, and have the opportunity to sell their books to our members. Um, and they've been like one-hit wonders that we've scattered throughout the calendar. This year we're going to have a readers' lecture series in working with the Association of Rhode Island Authors. So that will be coming out soon. We're going to have a technology series. I can't tell you how often um, members of the, the King House and seniors in the community will come in and say, Carm, what do I do with this tablet? Or I just got a smartphone and I don't know how to use the darn thing. So we'll have a whole, yep, yep, you're showing me your phone right now. Um, so we'll be having a whole series. Uh, some of them will be one-on-one -on -one sessions. Some of them will be small group sessions. But that will be coming out soon as well. A consumer protection series of events, financial planning series, and musical performance series. So that you'll be able to really put into your calendar a whole year's worth of events that you can pick and choose from at the Edward King House. All right. What do you think? And uh, now you just had uh, your the your current membership period. Yep. Just ended. I I, I don't want to put it like that because we, oh I gotta wait till next July. No 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 no. no, 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 no. We're on a rolling admission, but certainly the new membership year began um, on July first. Um, we certainly accept folks uh, to become new members at any time during the year. Just be aware that now that it's after. Uh, July 30th, or uh, when this airs, it'll be after July 30th. The cost now for an annual membership is $30 for the year, and the year ends on June 30 of 2016. But you're welcome to become a member at any time. Um, and, and just a, a few tidbits, the center will be closed on Monday, August 10th um, for VJ Day, and will be closed again for the week, the week of August 31st, leading to Labor Day. We'll open up again on September 8th for Registration Week, and the first week of classes um, in September begins on Monday, September 14th. So you, you'll be back from that break uh, just in time to tell all those fabulous stories about your trip to Washington, D.C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. It all happens so quickly. Wow. <laughs> it all seems to happen at one time. I know. Um, I know. But we've been planning this trip to D.C. for well over a year now, so I'm really excited about that trip. And like I said, you know, all the, the trips I've been on to different places, and and, and, and I, I'm including, and this isn't a knock, even as a diehard Boston sports fan, I mean, New York City is fascinating. It is. But I tell you, the place that really stood out to me most of all was Washington, D.C. Yeah. With all due respect to all those other great cities. It's just Absolutely. Really and, you know, we didn't realize how popular this trip would become until we unleashed the fact that we were going and the response was overwhelming, so much so that we needed to open up a second bus. So it will be me and at least 75 of my favorite seniors. All right. Checking down to D.C. Somebody better warn the president. We're coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Carm, uh, thanks. And again, thanks to uh, thanks for bringing along Vicki White. My pleasure. And uh, again, next month you'll have... I'll have Dale Dupuis from the, cell, the Senior Health Insurance Program. All right. And if you uh, maybe can't uh, tune in to hear these programs or you want to hear it again or if you joined us in midstream... The entire program now will be available online. Found online, absolutely. So uh, you folks are kind enough to give us the recording that we can place on our website. You'll be able to hear it anytime you wish. Just click on the WADK logo on the Edward King House website at www.edwardking.org. And for other more pertinent questions, give us a call at 401-846-7426. All right. Well, I hope to see you before, but... Uh, we will uh, talk to you again next month. Sounds great. See you then. Thanks, Carm. Thanks, Art.